Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite theorems, a very biased collection as usual. Um, today more like a type of strategy than a theorem. There will be a theorem eventually, but it's more a strategy. And I call it the greedy strategy. More traditional name would be greedy algorithms. Uh, we'll see what that means. And well, I certainly apply it all the time, very unsuccessfully actually, because most of the time those type of strategies, I'm going to show you what those are, are not really optimal and might be even very far away from being optimal, but they are very simple. And that's why I like to apply them all the time. Uh, well, I usually fail, as I said, and it's not optimal. But anyway, there are some remarkable exceptions where those strategies are optimal. And yeah, that's kind of the theorem I would like to present. Um, at least one case that I discuss in details, and then I give you a short list of other instances where this type of strategy applies. Uh, so let's have a look. It's kind of this idea that a greed is actually not so bad uh, in some sense, at least in some sense. Uh, well, we'll see. Okay, so here's kind of classical problem. It's called the Malfetti problem or Malfetti circles or something like that. I will just call it Malfetti problem. And those things here are called Malfetti circles. And the idea is as follows. I just have three circles, just three of them. And I have uh, some triangle that I fix. So the triangle is fixed. We can't vary the triangle, but we can vary the circles. And the task or the problem uh, is to put them in the triangle. So like, like in this picture such that each circle touches the two others. So the big one here touches the two others and each circle touch, touches two sides of the triangle. So the big one touches two sides of the triangle and the same is true for all the others. So this one here, same, and maybe I have a different color here. It's again, the same, right? So this is a problem and I would like to maximize the area of the circles, right? So let me say it again. We have a triangle, triangle is God given. We can't change the triangle. That's just what it is. So that's how the problem starts. But we are allowed to put circles into the triangle in this, well, very pre-described way. And we want to maximize the area of the three circles. So not the, but just the total area of the three circles. We want to maximize the total area. Um, turns out that this is not a completely trivial problem. Uh, maybe I give you a, time, a few seconds to think about what happens if you take the equilateral triangle. Uh, so what could you do in the equilateral triangle case? Okay, so maybe you just put uh, three triangles inside of the, yeah, of sure, three triangles inside, three circles inside. Yeah, yeah, three triangles. That was a brain fart. So three circles inside of the same radius that fit very nicely uh, into this triangle. But it turns out that this solution is not optimal. There's a better one, the one on the right. It's not much better, but it's a little bit better. And since we are looking for the optimal solution, well, the right-hand side wins. So the kind of obvious approach uh, doesn't quite work, namely to put just three equal, uh, so the symmetric approach, just to put three equal circles into the triangle. The other obvious approach actually works. So the right-hand side, so left-hand side is the obvious symmetric approach and the right-hand side is the obvious greedy approach. So let's try to be really greedy. We need to put three circles in our triangle. Why not, such that the area is maximized, why not put a huge circle in the triangle with the maximum possible area, then put another circle in the triangle with the maximum possible area and put the last circle in the triangle with the maximum possible area and hope that this kind of uh, doing it step by step so strategy gives an optimal solution. And in this case, it actually works. And this is really remarkable. So the, the biggest solution for any triangle, not just in this equilateral case, the biggest, so the best solution, the optimal solution is given by put three circles into the triangle in order and in each step, just put the biggest one possible. But this is kind of greedy, right? In each step, put the biggest one possible. You don't really care what happens in the long run. You don't really care what happens globally. Just locally do the maximal, uh, just put the biggest one. And that's what I would call a greedy strategy, not, not just me, but um, the usual <laughs> name is maybe greedy algorithm. Anyway, so it's kind of this idea that you should optimize locally and kind of hope that you get globally the best result. And I don't know how you feel. Uh, this is a strategy I certainly apply all the time. And I kind of feel like this is a very typical strategy humans tend to apply all the time. 
So you just optimize your local situation and you kind of hope that this in the end gives you an optimal solution in general. Um, and I don't see any good reason why that should happen. Kind of my brain likes to do it anyway. Um, I know that this is usually not a good strategy, but in some cases, this strategy is optimal, right? The local strategy uh, is actually the best global strategy. And this is remarkable. This really rarely happens. In my circle example here, the malfatic problem, it does, it is the case. So the very, very greedy and locally optimal put the biggest circle possible, gives you the optimal solution in general. And this is really non-trivial. This is really non-trivial and happens remarkably often. So if you think about it, I say it again, kind of this strategy is, is certainly something we all like to apply. I just say we all now, I, I only know it from myself, obviously, but I certainly like to apply it all the time. Just do what is the best now and hope that this is kind of the best solution in general, which is obviously completely nonsense. Just think about the following uh, situation. So you, you have two bumps and you want to find the biggest bump and you don't know where you start. Let's say you start here and then the greedy strategy would be, oh, it goes up here faster to, to the right, faster than to the left. So I go to the right. And there's no reason why you should, should find the, the biggest bump using the strategy, right? So in this example, you actually don't. Uh, but in some problems you do, and this is kind of the theorem here. So for the Malfetti problem, it works uh, for, for example, minimal spanning trees. A lot of problems in kind of graph theory which I'm not going to go into and many, many more. So whenever you see a greedy solution to a problem, this is remarkable and something is, is kind of going on here because there's really no a priori good reason why I do locally the optimum, uh, why this should give the globally the best solution. And this can be really horribly wrong. So my brain should be warned here actually. So the greedy algorithm strategy usually fails completely. And as I said, it's then remarkable and rare when the strategy works. Uh, for example, in this video, I focused on the Malfetti problem. So here's an example which horribly fails. So the only, well, very easy task, I have this given tree here and there's some labels on my vertices and I would like to find a path from a bottom to top such that the sum of the vertices is maximum. Okay, obviously, uh, well, you know, obviously, but here's a number 99, which is just dominating everything else. I could put a 1 million here or whatever. So clearly I should include this vertex to get an optimal solution. But the greedy approach would tell me, well, three is smaller than 12. So I would go here and then I was actually already dead. So the, the, the uh, but is it the red pass here is the greedy pass. And it's clearly not the optimal pass, right? Because whatever I put here, I could put a super huge number here and it would be arbitrarily off. And uh, that's kind of what I expect would happen in real life as well, if you apply a greedy strategy. Um, apparently, I'm not quite sure why, apparently greedy strategies work pretty well in real life. So they're kind of uh, like in the Malfatti problem itself. Remember that this is not very far off the, uh, the non-greedy one. Um, the greedy one actually works, but the non-greedy one is not really far off from the, from the solution. And maybe what in real life happens is that the greedy strategy is just well, super easy to apply. And it actually gives kind of best results up to some error that is negligible for real life, not for mathematically op optimization problems, right? If you really want to find the best solution, greedy is very, very rarely the perfect one. Um, but somehow it seems to work in most practical terms. And even in mathematics, it kind of seems to work uh, fairly off, which is a bit surprising. So some of life and mathematics have something in common that I don't really understand. Um, namely that greedy strategies reasonably work. So in mathematics, it's kind of based on well, experience if you want. So, uh, or experiment, whatever you want to call it, just observing enough problems. In real life, it's kind of weird, but since our brains seem to like greedy strategies, seems to like to apply them, it must have been an advantage at one point in our past. So. Maybe actually it's not so bad. Uh, anyway, I'm very roughly, right, very roughly right now, rambling all the time. I'm sorry. So let me come back to greedy strategy, greedy algorithms. So do locally the optimal and hope for the best is what I will call a greedy strategy. And it applies in surprisingly many cases. Well, it applies in surprisingly many cases in the sense that you get an optimal solution. Like in this three circle problem. Um, again, I said again, it works for all. 
uh, circ uh, circles. It works for all triangles. So in the equilateral triangle case, the kind of symmetric solution um, doesn't really work, but the naive greedy approach does work. And that's kind of remarkable. Anyway, I hope you don't apply too many greedy algorithms in your real life. Uh, maybe you do, I don't know. I certainly still will apply them. I'm a big fan. Uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.